What if I told you that childhood trauma physically shrink a child's brain? Could the words and actions from a caregiver permanently rewire how a child sees the world? Neuroscience doesn't just suggest this, it proves this. This video isn't just about abuse, it's about the invisible scars left behind. Scars that change how we think, feel, and live. If you're ever cared about a child, work with kids, or even survived trauma yourself, this could change everything. Let us dive into it. Precious Brain Lab, exploring the mind, one thought at a time. Now imagine the same child's brain literally reshaping itself in response. Yes, but abuse can permanently rewire a child's brain. And neuroscience proved this. Child abuse isn't just physical. It isn't just bruises, broken bones, or black eyes. It can be silent. It can be invisible. It can be child who's never hugged. The child who's constantly criticized. The child left alone for hours. Or the child forced to carry adult burdens. Child abuse comes in many forms. Physical abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, neglect. Each form is harmful, but each form alters development. Each form leaves lasting scars. The human brain grows faster than childhood. About the birth to age five, over a million new neural connections form every second. Now that's incredible, but it also means the brain is deeply vulnerable. Think about a brain has a construction site. If the environment is safe and supportive, strong structures form. If it's hostile, chaotic, or threatening, development is delayed, diverted, or destroyed. That's where child abuse comes in. A developing brain is like a wet cement. Whatever hits it leaves a lasting imprint. Every experience, every word, every look molds it. When a child is abused physically, emotionally, or through neglect, their brain goes into survival mode and stays there. Toxic stress floods the body with cortisol, helpful in short bursts, but harmful over time. It alters brain structure, damages neurons, and halts health development. Let us break it down. When you look at certain brain regions, amygdala, the brain fear center, abuse makes it hyperactive. The child is always on the edge, anxious, aggressive, or scared. Second, prefrontal cortex, the most important brain region, the logic and regulation center. Trauma weakens it, results impulsivity, poor decision, emotional outburst. Third, hippocampus, it's a memory factory of the brain. Memory and learning, it shrinks, leads to poor concentration, forgetfulness, emotional instability. Corpus callosum, 
the bridge between the brain's hemisphere is like the right and left hemisphere it bridges them together damage leads to disassociation emotional confusion and number fifth brain connectivity fear and weaker connection form disuse and stress the brain literally doesn't wire properly even in MRI scans of abused child show smaller brain volumes reduced white matter and poor across regions even language suffers not only that even language suffers the arcuate fasciculus critical for speech is damaged explaining speech and communication issues in many abused children you must have seen where the, where the trauma child when you try to talk to them they're unable to speak it's because of this problem that they have in the brain and there's more to it it doesn't stop there the most important fluid CSF cerebral spinal fluid protects and cushions the brain childhood trauma mark my words affects its flow abuse triggers the HP axis leading to chronic inflammation access cortisol and eventual tissue damage excess cortisol and eventual tissue damage this alters CSF levels and function and disrupts brain regulation these aren't just lab findings they show up in real life as well abused children may now these are the symptoms you must have seen or you must have experienced as a caregiver or a teacher lash out over small things freeze during examination fear touch or loud voices wet the bed isn't it perform poorly in school show screen or food addiction complain about headaches or heart racing these are not faults they are survival strategies they aren't bad kids let me give you an insight they aren't bad kids they are kids in pain and you as a caregiver you as a teacher you should look from a different light why this is happening and now further if they don't treat themselves and they get into adulthood they may face depression anxiety PTSD substance abuse eating disorder trouble forming or trusting relationships higher risk of incarceration joblessness or homelessness their behavior is a signal we must learn to read it here's the incredible part the brain plasticity it can heal yes it can with safety support and love the magical portion that every human being carries within themselves the brain rewires neural pathway repairs trust returns emotional control strengthens even one safe relationship can change a child's life healing isn't magic it's actually neuroscience and compassion now what helps here is what you need to do these are the tools that helps one of those tools trauma informed therapy you must have heard about it it's like a play therapy safe consistent environments creative outlets like art 
music movement. This alters the brain for the child. Mindfulness and emotional regulation, exercise, this is very important for the child's growth. Early intervention and education. Then comes calming the amygdala, the most important region of the brain that needs to be calm. How? Giving the child the magic potion called love they need from their parents, especially the mother's love. It's an effective way to calm a amygdala and the child will feel safe. This has been proven an experiment where the rodent had given birth to their children and the children, when they're exposed to the stress, they quickly run off to their mother and they just get warm and cozy with their mother where the mother expresses love to their children, the rodents, the children. And the children were feeling safe and they were feeling the feeling of warmthness and they, they were not feeling the fear any more longer. Which means it clearly shows if the mother gives the love to the child, the child will feel an effective way of feeling that safe love and the amygdala will eventually calm down. The next thing you need to do apart from this is very, very important for every caregiver parent. Look up for the child's vitamin deficiency if they've been through trauma, especially vitamin D and B12. Also, look up for their gut health. Please, as a parent, if they've been through child abuse, you need to take care of their stomach, especially when they have upset stomach every now and then, or they have an addiction of eating a lot of sweets, or they have a lot of uh, eating junk food. If they avoid eating food and look up for screening time, you need to get them away from there because this can also affect their overall health. Trauma also reduces the level of vitamins and this can lead to many other health issues like I said. And almost importantly, empathy, parents, presence. If you were once that child that is for you, if you were once that child, then this is for you. You did nothing wrong. Let me tell you this. You did nothing wrong and each time you feel that you have done something wrong then repeat this in your brain you did nothing wrong your brain did what it had to do to survive repeat this in your brain you are not broken you're resilent you can still heal yes you can still heal, you can still grow, you're not alone. If you're a parent or a teacher, a caregiver, then you have the power. What is that power? Speak gently, offer consistency, be a safe place. Say this to the child, you are safe, I see you and I feel you. Never scream, never hit. Correct with calm and lead with compassion. Therapy helps, support heals. Early love saves lives. Remember this. Abuse changes the brain forever. So does love. And to all of you I say, let's break the cycle. Let's protect the brain. Let's heal together. If this touched you, then please leave a comment, like this video, share with someone who needs this, 
Subscribe for more neuroscience-based content. And lastly, the most, most, most important thing. Please keep this in the mind. It's a magic portion of words. If you remember this, you'll never be in trouble. What trauma wired, love can rewire. Thank you for watching.